Next subject on the agenda is the continuing mutual disarmament talks with NATO. I assume you've all read the General Gogol's report. It seems very thorough. Thank you, Comrade Chairman. I believe I express the opinion of everyone present that adoption of NATO proposals does not compromise our defensive position. <clears throat> uh, comrade Chairman. General Orlov. Uh, General Gogol is presumptuous. He speaks for himself and others who cling to timid, outdated, and unrealistic policies. Must I remind you, the committee, of our overwhelming superiority over NATO forces? before we give it away. In East Germany, under my direct command, I have 31 divisions, including 11 tank divisions and another five in Czechoslovakia. In support, on the Russian western border are 60 divisions, including 22 tank divisions. In all, a 10 to 1 advantage. American and West German forces can field at most 10 armored divisions. The British <laughs> maintain only a token force. We have played out a variety of attack strategies on the new Kultsov computer and find that a lightning thrust by 10 armored divisions from the north and by five more through Czechoslovakia lead to total victory in five days against any possible defense scenario. This is absolute madness. We know where it will end. NATO will counterattack with nuclear weapon. Never! The West is decadent and divided. It has no stomach to risk our atomic reprisals. Throughout Europe, daily demonstrations demand unilateral nuclear disarmament. I see no reason to risk war to satisfy your personal paranoia and thirst for conquest. We must turn our energies to pressing domestic problems. General Gogo, let me remind Comrades. you... Sit down. I wish to Both tell you... Both of you... World socialism will be achieved peaceably. Our military role is strictly defensive. Duh. Is that understood, General Olof? General Gogol, would you continue? Thank you, Comrade Chairman. I will now turn to the specifics of my report. Uh, tell him I will be there as quickly as possible. Yes, 